Hey y'all, welcome to the Punga Up Prairie. Yeah, that's me, along with Grandma and Grandpa Ballette on the beach here in Virginia about a hundred years ago. Now, besides being a first-class welder many moons ago for Youngstown Sheet and Tube, my grandfather was an amazing cook. He grew up in Briar Hill, a neighborhood on Youngstown's lower north side known back in the day as the city's Little Italy. Many Italian immigrants, especially from southern Italy's Basilicata region, found their way there in the mid to late 1800s where they found work in the coal mines and the surrounding hills and the steel mills that were later built nearby. Grandpa's dad, Michael Joseph, who was actually born in 1874 to Giuseppe and Magdalene Vigliotti in Colabraro, a city high on a hill, right smack dab in the middle of the Arch of the Boot, found his way to Briar Hill as well. Upon immigrating to America, great-grandpa Vigliotti changed his last name to that of his wife's Elizabeth, which was Bellette. Grandpa had a baby brother, Louis, who was a boxer. Legend has it that Louis had never lost a match. And that one was scheduled with another boxer that had possibly been arranged by local mafia figures. Louis, age 19 at the time, was instructed by the mobsters to throw the fight, which of course he did not do. Apparently, this caused heavy betting losses for the mob, and Louis met with an early demise by being tied down in the railroad tracks outside of town. Now, Briar Hill was indeed a working class neighborhood made up mostly of Italian immigrants. And even today, the people there celebrate their heritage with the annual Briar Hill Italian Festival, which is held in August. There is dancing in the street and plenty of festive old world Italian food available from local vendors. During the first half of the 20th century, Briar Hill men built ovens on various streets in the neighborhood with discarded bricks from the steel mill. During the Great Depression, flour was distributed to the families and the women were assigned a particular day of the week for the purpose of baking bread in those community ovens. Leftover dough was used to make pizzas. Pizzas from homestyle recipes that had originated in the Basilicata region of Italy. Everyone had gardens back then where they grew tomatoes and peppers and fresh herbs in abundance. These were canned or dried for consumption during the off season. So it was only natural that their pizza was topped from the tomato sauce and those peppers. Money was tight, so the cheese of choice was grated Pecorino Romano. Typically, Briar Hill pizza is very basic, yet erupts with flavor. It's not that cracker thin crust pizza like you find in those hoity-toity Italian restaurants, which by the way, I love too. It's the pizza that my mom made at Christmas and that my whole Italian side of the family craves on a regular basis. And I'm going to show y'all how to make it too. So don't go nowhere, because you don't want to miss this. Now you're just gonna amore this recipe from my grandpa Bellette's Briar Hill Pizza. For making up our pizza dough, I like to use this double lot grind flour. You can use an all-purpose flour, but this right here is ground up a little finer and as it rises up and bakes, it yields a more uniform crust. Now we're gonna start with one cup of water it's warmed up to about 110 degrees. In goes our one cup of warm water, one and one quarter teaspoon of quick rise yeast, two teaspoons of sugar. That helps to activate the yeast. And a half teaspoon of salt. And one cup of our double lot grind flour. Lock it down, put her on low speed for about 30 seconds or so. Just kind of get it mixed up. This is just a basic, very basic pizza dough. Okay. I'm just gonna 
push this down on the side a little bit right here we're going to go with two tablespoons of some vegetable oil our second cup of flour give that a little mix and then our third cup of flour lock her down I'm gonna put our mixer on the second speed setting now letting that dough hook mix that dough around in there for about eight minutes now we'll take a minute here to tell you a couple things there's a method to the madness that water that you put in there you don't want to be hot water if it's too hot it's going to kill the yeast that's why about 105 110 degrees is just perfect and that sugar that we put in there is what the yeast starts to feed on starts to activate it and gets it doing its thing okay that should be good we've got our nicely kneaded pizza dough just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on our work surface here spread it out take our dough ball and kind of shape it into a round section like so Get it as even as you can, and I'm going to divide it into two equal pieces. Get that with the ragged ends tucked under, shape it into its own little nice round shape. Do the other one. Tuck that flat edge under there so it gets worked in nice and even into the dough. Okay, I got our two dough sections nicely formed. I'm just going to spray a little bit of this hand release on this baking sheet here. Transfer our dough. Give it one more little shot of the spray on top. And cover it with a sheet of this plastic film. Not too tight. And we're just going to place our dough in the refrigerator for four to six hours or you can even let it stay overnight and get a nice slow ferment going on it let's get our sauce working now i'm going to dice up one kind of small not too small sweet onion here and i want to dice it up kind of fine You don't want it grated, but you do want it kind of on the fine side. Okay. Now, you want two large garlic cloves. These aren't real large, they're kind of medium large, so I'm going to use this other little one too. Take their pajamas off. We want to dice these up fine nice and fine over about a medium heat we're going to add about two tablespoons of some extra virgin olive oil now I'm using my tapered reduction saucepan here because it's smaller on the bottom got a smaller diameter down there it's not going to make our oil get so spread out and it's going to help to cook our sauce and reduce it down a little bit quicker in goes our minced up garlic. Stir that around a little bit. Give it a little bit of a head start. Then our onion. Give that a little stir around. And we're going to give our onion and garlic about a couple of minutes in there to kind of soften up a little bit. We're going to take our little six ounce can of tomato paste which I've already cut the top off with the can opener on that end. We're going to turn it upside down and take the bottom out. 
actually we're not going to take it all the way out we're going to leave it in there for just a second because that makes it nice and easy to push that tomato cake see how clean it comes out of there and we're just going to kind of blend our tomato paste in there with them onions and garlic nice and smooth now goes two teaspoons of oregano dried oregano a teaspoon of salt a healthy quarter cup of sugar pizza sauce is supposed to be on the sweet side a half a teaspoon of some crushed red pepper and a tablespoon of some white wine vinegar we want our pizza sauce to be a little piquant and in goes our crushed tomatoes and we've rinsed our can with water to get all the rest of them out of there that's about maybe a quarter of a can of water we're going to add that do it all a nice blend in there might turn the heat up just a little bit to about medium here put the lid on it we're going to get a nice bubbly simmer going on it with the lid covering that pot for about 30 minutes or so but we're going to have to stir our sauce frequently because we don't want it sticking and burning on the bottom we want to get a nice temperature rise in there so that that heat can work its magic on those tomatoes release all the good flavor of those herbs the garlic the onions that crushed red pepper in there because what we're going to end up with is a really nice piquant pizza sauce with a really good full robust flavor oh yeah give it a nice stir around in there but you got to be very careful when you're doing this right here and you might want to stand back a bit especially if you're wearing a white shirt because this sauce right here it'll spit at you okay our sauce is cooked covered for about 30 minutes we're just going to take the lid off of it and let it reduce down there for about maybe 10 minutes or so on a low heat see how nice and rich that's getting put the lid back on it turn the heat off and I'm just going to let our sauce cool there a bit while our dough is rising. Now we easily have enough sauce here for a half a dozen or more pizzas. But if you're not going to make up that many right away, that's okay. I just put what we're not going to use in the freezer and that way I have it any time I want it. Now we're going to get our peppers ready. Now Grandpa Ballette, he only used green peppers when he made his Briar Hill pizza. But I'm feeling a little bit festive tonight, so I'm going to use... A red and a yellow the green and throw on one of these orange ones just for a little something to mix it up a bit cut the tops off and then we're just gonna come right in here and cut that seed core out just like so. Now I'm going to use about half of each one of our colored peppers. And we're going to use our whole green pepper. And what we're going to do here is we're going to cut them kind of into strips like so. Go right into this little saute pan with them. Put a nice little drizzling of this extra virgin olive oil. Okay, give all our pepper strips a nice blend around in there in that olive oil. Get them all coated up good. And we're just gonna saute our peppers up in this little saute pan here until they start to limp up a little bit. Okay, that's about what we want right there. Got all that nice pepper juice 
flowing, aroma going out of there. The peppers start to lose some of their crispness is what you want. It's gonna be just right for topping off our pizza. Just gonna set them right over here. And we're ready to make pizza. I retrieved our dough from the ice box after about six hours and I've had it just resting here on the counter for 30 minutes. Now we're gonna roll it out and build our pizzas. Now spread a little flour on our work surface here. Gonna take our first dough round and just kinda start working it out. I wanna try to leave a little bit of an edge on it. Not too big, just enough to make it interesting. We'll kind of flatten it out here in the middle with our hand. Spray our pan with a little bit of this pan release. And after I get it about like so, we're going to transfer it to our pan. And now I'm going to take this little roller and just kind of roll it out, get it a little thinner. Take it all the way to the edges, but I still want to keep that little bit of an edge going on all the way out. Let's make it a nice little Briar Hill pizza work of art. Take the little side, go right on there and get it nice and even in our pan. Grandpa Ballette always did this with his fingers in the palm of his hand. He didn't have a little cute little rolling pin like this. He'd probably be laughing at me right about now. Billy, what are you doing? What do you think, Patty, Cousin Patty? I know you're the family pro at making these out there in Colorado. Looks nice and even. We're just going to take this one, set it over here out of the way a minute, and roll this one out. This is the way Grandpa Ballette did it with his fingers. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this one to the pan and get this one pushed out. Do it Grandpa Ballette's way. I think I like Grandpa Ballette's way a little better. It was a little quicker. Actually get a nicer edge on it. Cause I like that crust. And this pizza, it's not one of those little thin crust pizzas. I'm going to use the rolling pin just a little bit, which I like if I have a nice brick-fired oven to cook it off in or a nice hot piece of stone. But this one is a little more bread. They wanted a little bit more bread. They wanted a little more filling back there during the Depression in Briar Hill when they didn't have much to eat to start with. I would expect if you serve them up one of them little thin cracker, thin crust pieces. They'd have probably looked at you like you had two heads. Start with some of this nice homemade Hungo Prairie pizza sauce. Man, I wish y'all could smell this sauce. Now the sauce is not hot, I let it cool. It's a little bit better than room temperature. We're gonna kind of ride out to the edge of our dough roll there. I know I'm not as fast as those guys in the pizzeria places but hey I'm having fun here. Now goes our peppers. Now like I said Grandpa Ballad he only used green peppers but I'm mixing it up here a bit and going with these multicolor sweet peppers. Oop. And escapee. Nice generous portion of peppers here. Now sometimes along with those green peppers he liked to put on his piece of Grandpa Ballette but put some anchovies. And I love anchovies. I love them on salads. I'll tell you I love them in a puttanesca but I really don't care for anchovies on a pizza. So for these and right now and my purposes I'm gonna leave these little rascals sealed up right here in this can. I've got a blend here of some shaved and some grated Pecorino Romano. And I'm just going to go all around on top of our pizza and our peppers and sauce with this nice cheese. Right on out to the edges with it. Ain't that pretty? 
Now we go on with our second one. Might have put a little bit too much sauce on that first one. Not because I don't like the sauce. It may keep the, the dough from rising up nice and plump like I like it. Nice and aerated. Go with a little bit less sauce on this one. On with our peppers. Get pretty. Look, get a red one. So good. Wish you could smell them right now. Okay, right here, I'm gonna take a little break from tradition. This is some crumbled ghost cheese. Now, this was never used by my grandfather on his Briar Hill pizzas, and I doubt they use it in the church up there where they make so many of these things in Briar Hill, Ohio, right outside of Youngstown. But I like it, so I'm gonna put some of it on there. I hope. Grandpa will forgive me that I like that goat's cheese. And now our Pecorino Romano, shaved and grated. Top it all off. Is that pretty or what? And in she goes into our 450 degree preheated oven. We're gonna bake it in that oven for maybe eight to 12 minutes. Depends on how hot your oven really is. If you got a nice thermometer in there and you know it's 450 degrees, should probably only take about eight, maybe 10 minutes or so. But we're gonna check it after eight. We want a nice golden color on the crust, not too brown and a little nice and bubbly on top. Let's see what we got. Is that beautiful or what? Go right down here with it. I'm getting excited now. I'm gonna make a salad real quick. That was quick. Some of my nice homemade Italian salad dressing. Salad, a nice little toss. Get some of the greens on there. I like that nice escarole. A bit of romaine. Nice fresh tomato and orange slices. Mm, mm, mm. Now we gotta add pepperoncini. Some of these nice oil cured olives. Castello Vitrino olives, however you say it. And when you see a fresh orange on the side like that, you know it's Italian. Another pepperoncini right on top. And then with our goat cheese. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so good. Now we're ready for some pizza. Now like I said, I don't like anchovies on the pizza. But I do like them on a salad. And a good Italian salad, to me, ain't complete without them. I'm just going to slide that pizza right off the pan there. Run our pizza wheel through it. I'm going to cut one more. This could be a three-piece pizza night. Isn't that beautiful? See what I was telling you about that double lot flour? It gives us nice little tiny pours. Pour us a nice glass of this cool crisp rosé. Dear Lord, thank you for our rich history as Americans that have woven into the very fabric of our culture, thread made from fibers of so many other cultures of hardworking folks from all four corners of your green earth. And thank you especially for the Italian people being such amazing cooks and that my grandpa Bellette was one of them whose sacrifice of time and whose hard work along with so many others who've come together to build this one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And thank you now for this delicious Briar Hill pizza. Bless it to nourish our bodies and strengthen our spirits for a life in thee. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Now you know I've been dying to dive into this. Now this is what I'm talking about right here. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. That is so good. I gotta have another bite. Mmm. Now I'm going to tell you something. 
That Briar Hill pizza right there is bountiful on flavor. I think Grandpa Ballette would even be proud of me for this one. And that, girls and boys, is what's cooking on the Pungo Prairie. <sighs> even the salad's good. A little hairy fish, anybody? <laughs> I can hear you now. <laughs> my little girl, sweet baby Atten, would steal these off my salad plate when she was just a baby. Orange. Oh, that's good. One of my favorite things to grow in the garden, besides tomatoes, peppers, and okra, is eggplant. Now that we got our eggplant all stacked up in our little casserole dish here, in she goes to the oven. When the stars make you drool like a pasta bazool, you're in love. And in love is exactly what you're going to be with my Grandpa Bolette's pasta bazool. Now is that pretty or what? Now normally I like to use tomatoes that I've canned up fresh from the garden back in the summertime whenever I happen to have them on hand. And trust me, I do. I got them all dumped out in this little bowl here. And we going in. Cousin Susie, I got some of Grandpa's jeans in me too, baby. And it's kind of looking a little bit like Youngstown around here today too now, isn't it? Now this is going to be an epic platter of meatballs right here. That's a pizza with pizzazz. 